In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the use of nodes in a very simple way. This tutorial is for people who are really new to nodes, and we're going to look at a mix node that is very, very commonly used to be able to mix together, say, a bitmap with a color, and then drive that into the specular channel, because we want to create a reflection on this wood object that is more interesting than if we did not have a little bit of variability in the wood surface. You can see that there's a wood texture, but it's a little bit too pristine in the way that it's reflecting. If I turn on the version that we're going to end up modifying, you can see that in this specular region here, here, and on the side, it's a little bit more organic and interesting and realistic than if we don't have it versus when we do have it. And we're going to use this simple node setup to do that. And we're going to look at a couple of details about it that may not be very obvious, especially if you're coming from, say, Photoshop, where you can mix layers together, because it's a little bit different in Blender. This node setup will allow you to control the overall degree of specularity, or whatever parameter you want to drive, using Color 1, while Color 2 will modify that primary driving value in a relative way. So the Mix RGB is really, really useful, and we're going to look at it in context of altering the specular channel. Let's first look at the specular channel for the wood material. The specular channel contains a value of 0 0.425, which is just a low amount of reflection, and it gives us just a little bit of this nice glossiness that we're seeing. It's the default value I would suggest you use for most typical uses. But that uniformity is really not exactly as real as we would like it to do. So we can take the wood bitmap that we're using, create a grayscale version of it, and then use that to alter that specularity in just a little bit of a way that will make it look like reflections are reflecting off the wood surface in a more organic way. If we come back over and we take a look at this, we can represent 0.425 by an actual color value. So if I come over here, I've created an RGB node, and that RGB color node can be assigned the exact same value. So when I click the swatch, I can assign value 0 0.425. And if I were to drive this into the specular channel, it would give us the exact same result as if I simply had 425 right there. Now, I've already imported in an image texture of this grayscale version of the wood that I'm using, and we can use that to vary the specular channel. But if we just drove this directly into that specular channel, the values are going to be used as is, where 0 equals black and white equals 1.0, and black means there's not going to be any reflections, and areas that are perfectly white are going to have a full intensity of reflections, if you want to think about it that way. What we want to do is not just drive those values in, we want to have more control of our starting point. And our starting point is that 0 0.425 color value. So what we want to do is modify this just a little bit with the wood texture, this grayscale wood texture. So the way that we do this is to add a mix RGB node. So you would simply come up to add and you could just search for mix RGB and that's what you would get. We want it to be in multiply mode, but for right now, let's set it to its default mix. And the first thing that we want to do in order to understand how this functions to mix these two together, we want to come over to Photoshop and just understand how Photoshop does this, because this is going to be a reference point that many people are going to understand when they try and use Blender's mixing system, because we're, we've got these two layers, if you want to think about it, the color and then the bitmap that we're going to mix together. So. By default, in Photoshop, when you have two layers, the one sitting on top is going to have a normal mix, and the opacity is going to be 100, which means it simply overwrites the layers underneath it. There's no interaction. But as soon as we start lowering that value, then we can see the appearance of the layer that's underneath it. That's very easy to understand. But if we then change the transfer mode to, say, something like multiply, then at 100%, it multiplies against the layer below it, and you get a full interaction. 
But if we were to come over here now and drag this value of opacity down to zero, then this upper layer has no effect and we don't see it. And this is the key difference with how Blender works. Okay, so let's come back over here to Blender and take a look at this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to alter the view just a minute here and we're going to I'm going to move the camera in really close so that we can see this upper part of the chair. And we're going to, instead of driving a color into base color, we're going to temporarily drive our shading setup here that's going to drive specular. We're going to temporarily drive it to base color. So the first thing that we need to do is come over to color and note that you need to assign to value that 4.25. This is sort of the core of what we want to drive for the degree of reflectivity on our surface. So that's going to co go to color one. And color two is our bitmap, the wood grayscale bitmap, and we're going to drive that to color two. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the factor and set it down to zero. And then we're going to take this and we're going to drive this up here into the base color temporarily. And I can turn on interactive renderer so that we can see it. We can turn on cycles. You can see it's just a gray color. Let's see what happens if we in fact take factor and drive it to one. And then we can see the grayscale color two bitmap. And it is at 100%, meaning it is now fully being rendered and we're having no influence from this. So if we were to set this to a value of 0.5, there's basically an even mix between the RGB color we're using and the specular bitmap of the wood. But we want this to be a little bit more subtle because we still want the predominance of this color to drive the overall degree of specularity or reflections on the surface. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually change this from mix to multiply. And then it'll do exactly the same thing that Photoshop does is it takes the top color and multiplies it or darkens, if you want to think about it that way, the underlying color to wood bitmap. But we want to do this in a way to understand what happens when we're changing the factor. If I now, with multiply being set as our transfer mode, take our factor and set it back to zero, you're going to note that we don't see the wood texture. And this is the thing to remember. In Blender, when your factor is set to zero, only color one shows up regardless of what your transfer mode is. And it acts as if we were back in Photoshop and had the top layer set to 100% normal mode. In order to start mixing in just a little bit of wood texture, we have to start setting the factor up just a little bit. 0.35, I think, is a value that brings forward just a little bit of the underlying wood texture. But still, it's the underlying RGB grayscale color that is still the predominant value that's going to drive the degree of specularity on the surface. Setting this factor up just as we start inching it up closer to one, it will transition from this normal state where this has full influence and it will begin to introduce the multiply effect just subtly. So it, it, it functions a little bit different than Photoshop Layers does. It may not be obvious at first when you start using this that that's what's happening. So I think a value of 0.35 is a good value in terms of the amount of subtlety here. But the thing to remember is that we're really only introducing darkening into this because it's now set to multiply mode. So what I want to do is I want to come over here now and I want to remove this from the base color. And I want to introduce this back to our specular channel here. And we turn our base color back on where we start seeing the specular highlight that we're going to see a degree of interaction. So let me come back over here now and turn off our node setup. And when I turn that off, you can see these specular highlights look a little bit bland. We don't see as much interaction of the underlying wood as we would like to have. Here's another example where we've got these cabinets with the wood texture that's got an almost identical node set up to the chair. In this first example, we have no modification of the specular channel, and so that specular reflectance that we can see heavily at the top looks a bit too perfect. 
but we'd like that specularity to interact with the wood as if there's a bit of variation in the wood itself. So by setting the factor from 0 up to 0 0.5, we get the color 2 bitmap affecting, via the multiply transfer mode, the primary color 1, which is driving the overall degree of reflectance and modifying it just a little bit. If we want even more influence, then we can go to a value of 0 0.75 or to a full value of 1.0 to get the full effect. So that is what I wanted to show you when you're using this mix RGB, because the way that Blender uses this factor function and you've got two inputs is the way that this factor function works in other nodes.